Hello and welcome to this very special pre-budget panel that we have with us uh, today and uh, we're calling it What Markets Want because we've come to a time when every morning you want to check in on what Asia is doing, how much crude is and before going to bed you're checking what US markets are doing but we have a very big trigger in uh, our own domestic macros called the union budget coming up next. So let's find out what the market really wants and two extremely eminent gentlemen joining us today on the panel that's Manish Shukhani as well as Ram Agarwal to make sense of this madness going on across the globe and where does India lie in the peace of the pie. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining in. Manish, thanks let me start off with you. How critical is the budget really? Because like I just mentioned, there's China, there's crude, there's Grexit, there's Brexit, Absolutely. there's US. What can the budget do? So, well, the, the, the funny way to think of it is there are a lot of rich uncles and aunties in the world who are in, you know, major, in trouble. <laughs> major trouble. And our doctor is going to come and visit us. Uh, and <laughs> you can only hope he doesn't give us a dose of stiff medicine that day. But other than that, you're going to still keep looking, you know, come first March, you're going to look what's going to happen rest of the world, will the flows come? Because eventually markets run on weight of earnings. Mm. Uh, and that earnings are going to be, you know, in a funk because of what's happening in the rest of the world, at least externally. Uh, and you really run on sentiment and you run on liquidity. There is no liquidity. Mm. And sentiment isn't going to turn on a dime irrespective of what we do in the budget. So and there is no it's a tough either. space. Yeah. So yeah. just another day, it's not going to be anything market. Yeah, great, great television. <laughs> 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 Certainly. Yeah. No, but you know, Ramdev, uh, yeah. is this budget more about, and before we get to specifics, is this mm. budget more about what the markets don't want as yeah. opposed to what markets want? So that's a very small portion of the budgetary exercise. Yeah. I mean, though, since we are in financial markets, probably we might be very keenly looking for that one line where the capital gains <laughs> tax is one or three years or something like that. But I think the larger thing is that uh, what kind of vision the finance minister of this government has about kick-starting the investment uh, in this economy. Mm. You know, I mean, all kinds of uh, constraints are there. Fiscal uh, economy is not growing, so revenue is not growing. There is no tax buoyancy. There is a constraint on the fiscal deficit you can have. Uh, you have a very uh, watchful uh, uh, central banker, uh, rating agencies. So in that situation, how do you wriggle out? Mm. And yet you have to kick a start. And nothing can kick a start unless you put a uh, few hundred billion dollars. And that's where the imagination of uh, yeah. this finance minister and how he carves out from a very small one-acre plot, how does he make a hundred hundred story skyscraper? You know, but, the, you yeah. know, I was sorry, just an extension. We would yeah. typically never start a pre-budget discussion with a tax question, but the market is just so spooked about whether yeah. long-term capital gains tax is going to come or not. What could be the thinking behind? Whether it comes or not, mm. we'll find out on the 29th. Mm. What could be the thinking behind it? And could that really derail an already grappling market? No, I mean, pre-budget, you can keep uh, asking some crazy things and, you know, keep <laughs> imagining the crazy things. I think the best thing, uh, because we don't understand how Delhi works. I mean, at least I don't understand how Delhi works. Whether it is rational or irrational, that also I cannot say. Markets are definitely irrational in the short term. Mm. Okay, so uh, two irrationality is like a irrationality squared up. <laughs> so let's be cool, uh, watch uh, the budget till end. And mm. see, you have to look at the total package. If uh, I wish they abolish the dividend tax altogether. Mm. Double tax and dividend has to be abolished. If you really want equity markets to fire up. Mm. You know, fire up means, see, you are in a FI trap. This market is in the trap of FII. Sure. You have handed over disproportionate portion of the market in their hands. 20% mm. of the equity and 40% of the floating stock. Yeah. Now, so they determine the uh, trends. And they're, they're, not, they're not dependent, their allocation is not dependent on what happens in India. Their uh, bulk of the location is depending on their view of the world, sure. which at times it doesn't look that uh, bright, mm. you know. And hence, uh, they, see, you, you see, last three years you got a lot of money without asking for it. You didn't deserve to get anything. You got $100 billion. Yeah. So it will go where you deserve. <laughs> well, hope so it. how do you create a counter force? Mm. Mm. Sure. And that's, I mean, these are thoughts I would like to see in the budget, at least thinking, if not action. You know? Okay. So... That's one point that is out. Uh, the other uh, thing, and I think a lot of focus is there uh, on that number, uh, the fiscal deficit number. And Manish, the question really is that whether the trade-off, I mean, everybody knows the trade-off. The question is whether he goes ahead and sticks to the given target, because it's also a question to a lot of people about credibility of what they have said and whether they stick to it, or they actually just loosen the springs a little bit because they need to bring in that much desired consumption growth. 
So, you know, think of our government as a, you know, indebted company. Mm. Uh, and therefore, there was an EPS forecast put out. And now, mm. question is, do I miss the EPS forecast by five like percent, yeah. or do I miss it by twenty <laughs> percent? That's 20%? a disclaimer. And, <laughs> and in and in 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 what manner is the miss coming? Mm. Because if you look at the way a uh, rating uh, agency or the bond markets or currency markets will look at this, they'll say you guys got a windfall from oil this year. Mm. It's not like there is not a crisis in India every other year, and therefore there's every other year an excuse to let fiscal targets slip. But reality is when you look at consolidated fiscal along with state and center governments and public sector, we're already at a 6-7% of GDP number. So it's because you'll put the Uday Commission uh, you mm. know, burden on the states and the bond markets have reacted to that already, then you will also put the one rank, one pension, you will also put the se seventh pay commission yeah. burden on it. So the revenue expenditures are going a bit, a bit crazy. Mm. And reality of life is the central government accounts for 1% of GDP in terms of capital expenditure. 1% is their capex, 0.8 is the capital expenditure of defense. So 1.8 is the total number which comes out of his budget. 1.8 in a country which has an investment rate of 30%, even if you move two decimal points here or there, it's not going to really you know, move the needle. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing though is instead of then asking the public sector companies to also kickstart and start investing, the opposite is happening that let's do buyback, let's get dividend, so that my balance sheet improves uh, and you know, forget what happens to the rest of the country. And I completely agree with what Ramdev is saying, that if, if you looked at this government as a company, mm. you would see that the debt number to their revenue number is 5x. Debt to GDP of the yeah. central government is close to 5x of its revenue. The interest cost which they pay is 35 to 40% of their revenue. If, you're in, if you look at it in that context, you'll stop disputing this 3.5 of GDP is a bogus number. You should say my loss is 35% of my revenue. In that situation, what you do is I have to sell assets. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the political reality. I have to go down the path which the Vajpayee government did very successfully and rightly. Because every asset they invest in, MTNL, BSNL, Air India, Doordarshan, one after the other, you destroy value. Why are you holding so on to it? That's a remedy, but a quick 30-second yeah. answer. So does he stick to the FISC number because that is what everybody will look at? Or will he loosen it and go ahead and... So, like I said, how is that FISC number coming? If it comes by manipulation and anyway, you know, at the end of the year, mm. what is promised and what comes out are, you know, two different entities. So it's like a... It's a kind of IPO prospectus. This is the promise to the investors. <laughs> uh, markets will react to that. If the capex number goes up, if the bank recap number is much higher, you know, and dispensation is made for that, I think people will be happy. But if you reach a 3.5 number and say bank recap is a measly 10, 20,000 crores, capex number is 10,000 extra on roads or bridges, sure. I mean, come on. This country needs a lot more action than that. And that lot more, Ramdeo, is growth. Does he Absolutely. really have the bandwidth, the elbow room to revive consumption in a big way? You need imagination. <laughs> see, anything <laughs> yeah. is possible. Yeah. Does he have I, it? No. See, it's a large country with a lot of possibilities. Hmm. You can sell assets. You can, you can get foreigners to invest. You can excite Indian investors uh, to push them away from the gold to uh, sure. equities, equities or bonds or whatever. You can unearth a lot of uh, black money in India and abroad. People say it is running into trillion. So there are a lot of options. What do you want to do? How much you are empowered? How much you can imagine? And how much you will act at a given point of time? See, they are masters of uh, public finances. We are not. We are corporate guys. Mm. So we think in terms of few million dollars, few billion dollars here and there. They are thinking trillions now. You know, It's a very serious uh, exercise of... Because uh, this is a game of money, you know. Um, this economy is not going to move. This is a $2 trillion economy. If you want to really make a push in a headwind environment, you need to really give a lot of push in terms of investment. And that can happen only with the money. Either There are only three guys who are uh, to invest. Private uh, uh, corporates in India, uh, uh, corporates from abroad, or government itself. Okay. Private corporates, they are doing whatever they, sure. what makes sense. You know, just before we slip into that break and trying to uh, restrict this conversation to the purview of the budget, Manish, mm -hmm. do you think, I mean, a lot of things will happen in the budget session, which sure. probably will last until a April, yeah. May, but do you think there could be a key commentary or what, would the market be hoping for some key comments being made on the bankruptcy code, on That's the GST, right. so on and so forth? Are these words that the market desperately wants to hear? Yeah, I think not just the words, but the belief that these yeah. will actually get implemented. Hmm. Because you can Is the budget the forum of, to do that? So, some of some of this nowadays has become a lightning rod and you don't therefore want to necessarily attract a lot of attention. Hmm. 
and in some sense one hopes that it's not such a spectacular budget that the whole opposition decides to gang up and sabotage you know the ruling party uh, so really the the best way to approach the budget is to keep expectation low hope he doesn't disappoint hope he doesn't put some more poison into the system uh, and they play the structural game which they have been playing smartly by devolution of power to states uh, getting dbt directly into people's hands and getting the government out of all of that so directionally the moves which are being made are right and as long as they stay that course uh, i frankly don't expect anything spectacular to come knowing the you know players and the political realities involved under promise and over deliver yeah. okay that's the that's the case but time for a very quick break we come back and continue our conversation try and nail it down to some small specifics as well Well, back with this pre-budget special, what market wants, and in conversation with Manish Chokhani and Ramdev Agarwal, we've we've gotten the broad painting. Now I'm trying to uh, fill up the key dots or the key pockets uh, from the market's perspective. And Ramdev, let me start with you. Mm. Uh, <laughs> one key thing that everybody in the markets want mm -hmm. is some more commentary and color on capital infusion for public sector banks. A small, measly amount was laid out the last time. Obviously, that's not enough. and now the banks are in dire need mm. it will have a multiplier impact as well yeah. do you think there is scope for that this budget see it's not only about the capital i mean the whole see the problem is too deep and too important a problem this is not a akashwani yes. you know this is uh, this is banking system of any country mm. you know this is 70% of the banking system it's completely today uh, broken uh, down in terms of capital adequacy and the way it is functioning so one is of course capital that's the first starting point But after that, what is going to be the? I mean, you have you have stuffed the uh, past problems. But what about the new problems? Mm. How do you run it efficiently? You how do you raise the quality of operations mm. straight up? So all that roadmap has to be clear either before budget, budget immediately after that. But that's the biggest thing happening right now. So mm -hmm. we got to get not only about the capital. That's the bare minimum. Whether they are giving, they are. I mean, what is the game plan for recapping? Second is what is going to be the. Uh, reforms in the uh, management structure how do you how do you install right. a brand new management out there mm. in all the 26 27 banks it's not one or two or three so uh, i think those things will really matter and if you get good manager do you want them to be there for 5 10 years yeah that's that's i i think that's been something that a lot of people have been hoping for yeah. as well uh manish but you know just point on rural demand as well i mean could he say anything on that because orop as well as seventh pay commission have sort of somewhere taken care of that already so you know the reality is the rural demand is a function of what the state governments do because the whole irrigation spend the whole power sector spend really goes out of state government balance sheets it's, it's not really a central government issue hmm. it makes for dramatic headlines to say we will put a narega program or we'll give 30000 crores for you know irrigation hmm. but the numbers if you think of it what the states do there is 4 lakh crores spent on education in this country every year in theory mm, in theory now you know what the quality of the output which comes because even when we are hiring for the infosys and wipros of the world from the most prestigious institutions we say we need to put them back for 6 months of training <laughs> so there are big black holes in expenditure so it's not about the outlays it's mm. about the outcomes mm. and i don't think any government stands up and shows what the outcomes are at some point people used to disdainfully talk about the narega program as you know digging holes and then covering them up mm. and then suddenly virtues have been discovered in even in that that let's use this money now to start going and building rural roads so it's really like ramdev rightly says it's what is the architecture of the country we want to do rather than you know these worn out phrases oh i will do this for rural and i will do this for urban the, it's it's like the political debate that do you do things for minorities do you do things for the <laughs> citizen So I don't think the rural side is a rural side anymore because 10% of the GDP or 15% of GDP is now agriculture. The rest of it is really small, self-employed people in those areas around whom towns are forming. Mm. So the country is urbanizing, and the government is still pretending that we have a rural countryside. You know, waiting for monsoons. You know, waiting for agriculture prices to lift off. That's not the reality anymore. Yeah, but having said that, I mean the idea is to try and figure out. I mean these structures are very much. Yeah. necessary and welcome but maybe not going to be announced on feb 29 what might be announced yeah. is essentially the kind of outlays that he might be but able to give that's the point here that if we keep doing mathematics sure. and moving two decimal okay. points here and there like i i i know i was joking earlier but 
I'll give you an illustrative example of our tax code. It's so elegant and beautifully designed. Now, related to a real life example, let's say the two of us come down on the worldly bandra ceiling mm -hmm. and at the toll, instead of saying pay 80 rupees or whatever and go, if they start measuring, if your car is more than four meters, pay 90. <laughs> if you have more than 2000 cc, pay 102. If you have diesel, pay 130. What will happen? You will have a traffic jam on the, on the expressway. That's the state of our country. We're in a permanent state of jam because all we're doing is figuring out who has to be paid how much and how long do I have to take so I can start moving in life. Ramrita, that needs to get simplified. Yeah, the Bandra Worli ceiling brings me to my next question. Taxation and diesel, the government seems to be heavily coming down on that and there seems to be this big thrust on renewable clean energy. Do you think something will actually come about, something decisive will come about and would be beneficiary or non-beneficiary as it may be the case for diesel car manufacturers or people who are into clean renewable energy? I think the bigger issue is that uh, what's the assumption on which this budget will be built, whether a $40 oil, $30 <laughs> oil or $60 oil. Because it's the, see, this year's budget is saved or 15, 16 is yes, saved because, because of, of uh, bountiful hmm. you know, uh, tax collection on yeah. uh, oil. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if oil reverses, hmm. will he give it back? Yeah. What is the assumption? Because it's a very temporary. I'm quite sure that this is a done by Saudi Arabia. He will take it away. Yeah. You know, in 15 months they've given it. 15 months they'll take it away. The demand comes back. Hmm. So clearly, you are in a very you know, uh, if the growth doesn't come, actually, uh, they have given Saudi Arabia has given us time. Boss, kick up your growth quickly. Hmm. <laughs> we are. I mean, this is a, this is a small yeah. lunch pack we've given you. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you uh, you start earning, yeah. and so because, by chance oil reverses sixty dollars, hmm. and uh, if the budget is built on a thirty dollar, thirty five dollars assumption. That money will keep coming. You can you imagine what kind of disaster will have at the middle of the year? We'll find that uh, we are not getting that those dollars. Yes. I'll just put so some context. You, yeah. I'll just put some numbers. Yeah. The oil windfall mm. is one percent of GDP, mm. which That's has right. added to the excise collections. That one percent windfall, if it had gone to the consumers in India or the producers in India, hopefully we would have multiplied GDP. Mm. What we find is one point four percent of GDP is now going to go through the seven pay commission to across the board, and I'm not saying it's not a required thing, hmm. uh, but that is now the stimulus package, that is the growth. Yeah. Yeah. So we have taken the oil windfall and given it to the 40 odd million True. center, state, public sector, teachers, doctors, all that in the country. And therefore we are hopeful, you know, come August, September, when that money starts finding its way into their pockets, uh, you start seeing some revival of consumption. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm such a small minority here, but almost everybody says that it should have been passed on to the consumer, to people like you and me. Yeah. I'm saying it's okay, it's gone to people who actually need it a slightly no, they are more the consumers than consumers yeah. as well. Yeah, precisely. Because the government is the largest <laughs> employer in the country. True, true. Okay, so then uh, as, as we draw down this discussion <coughs> to a close and trying to focus now squarely on the markets, is the way of uh, approaching investing in this market, and probably similar questions to both of you, Ramde, to you first, mm. is, it, is the way to approach this market, out, uh, is the purview outside the budget? Don't look at the budget, just look at the budget as a statement of accounts. But, yeah. I mean, this will not do anything but for a day's move. Yeah. A lot will happen beyond it. Yeah, yeah. There's is, there is not even a, I mean, 0.001% of the entire investing process. Budget is just another event. You know, I mean, the, uh, you, you don't invest because there's going to be budget. There's going to be 10 budgets in 10 years. Sure. For sure. So you can't be changing and there will be 10 new finance ministers and prime ministers and uh, all kinds of world will come. So clearly investing is well beyond that. Hmm. I mean, it is not even in the... No, I, I mean, investing at the current times right yeah, now. Yeah, so I am telling you, hmm. because of budget, nothing changes. If I want to buy today, I'll buy. If I want to sell something, I'll no. sell. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Manish, status quo for you as well? No, You're similar, in sync that, with him? Like, look, if something can be affected so dramatically by the budget, it surely deserves a low multiple because it can be changed <laughs> in the next budget. And therefore, if you look at wealth creation over 20, 30, 40 years... I don't think FMCG companies, pharmaceutical companies, IT companies, yeah. auto companies, they have not sat and held their breath over what's going to come in the budget or not. It's always been the policy dependent sectors which, you know, hope I'll get some concession here or I'll get some extra allowance over here. Uh, it's not about those sectors that haven't been wealth creators for, for generations, so it's not likely to change, uh, you know, this year. Yeah. Well. What is the biggest factor right now which you think is dominating uh -huh. world markets? Would it be crude? No, world markets is actually the world is frankly their bust. The fact is there is too much debt in the world. India is, I think, exaggerating its problems. Our debt to GDP of the government is 70% of GDP. Mm. US, Japan, all are 350% of GDP and there's no growth and there's nothing. So 
it's a whole scam going on that these guys are printing trillions of dollars and our currency is falling mm. so that's you know a debate for another day <laughs> we don't know how to market our own story and take all this money there's 3 trillion dollars in government securities mm. at negative interest rates <laughs> if our government cannot imagine a way to attract this money and say here take this road take this bridge we'll give you 4% return on it bring 100 billion dollars in mm. that's the way to go about it exactly what he's saying be imaginative because there's no option this country will have unit volume growth if I, it's like he said if you have to bet on will motorcycle sell more will cars sell more of course they will that's the bet to take and whether there's a good budget bad budget fi comes fi doesn't come like we always say when the vision of profit will come <laughs> the price will follow no, so so to be fair they they did try to do this right the this investment target was fairly high that they didn't go ahead and manage it i mean compared I, to what happened know, compared want, to what i happened. just want you to just take in context it's a 2 trillion dollar economy no, I, i said you have a trillion dollars of debt and sure. you want to do 6 billion dollars of disinvestment come on you're just trying to match your interest payment the interest payment is 3 and a half percent of gdp See, you have so what you, it's like shocking the, yeah, the yeah. S- smallness with which we are approaching mm-hmm. our issues over here is a time to go and just you know loot the world in a way in, instead we are getting you know badgered and beaten up by the world you want to add to See, that Ram? global economy is 75 77 trillion dollars yeah. to- upwards of 20% is annual savings those mm-hmm. jokers they don't know where to put the money <laughs> it is going below uh, you know base rate yeah. below negative i mean and now the discussion if you read ft the, what they're saying is that this 0.1 point 0.2 negative is not good enough we must yeah. go deeper negative absolutely sure. now can you imagine here at 12% mm. we don't get money yeah. you know so i think uh, there has to be uh, there has to be a lot more thinking i'm not good at uh, global macro and local macro public finances they are very different very sophisticated subject but then the guys who are good they should have that imagination yeah. how i mean this is very clear that there is a huge amount of money lying there sure they want to come here also we need we we need to prepare situation which mr modi is trying very hard right from day one to create a very conducive environment whereby billions and billions, hundreds of billions flow into india come into india cool okay uh, ha- having said that as we wrap up this discussion uh, you know the reason why i bring this question back again and just you know a ramdev agarwal a manish chokani are investors who probably invest right now if the markets were to correct 10% they will probably go out and buy more they won't get ruffled and they will hold the story for next 5 10 years but there is a set of viewers who probably cannot do that or don't do that they might be slightly shorter term investors than you are they might be more tactical than what you are right now by virtue of whatever it I is i hope you are not referring to the speculators no no i'm no, not no, referring no. to speculators at all yeah. so my, here's my question ramdev yes the question is if indeed there are some measures taken mm-hmm. which could lead to a correction in the market and therefore it gives a better tactical opportunity and which is why my question that do you foresee that these if indeed there are these decisions taken with regards to capital gains tax or a service tax being up 2% so on and so forth it results in, in a fall in the markets and therefore probably gives better entry points to people so do you think that will happen if indeed the measure is taken i told you in the beginning if i want to buy today yesterday i got my dividend i bought it yesterday only <laughs> so <laughs> you know 100% i bought it till 4 o'clock sure there's nothing left so, so this is a this is a honest uh, statement i'm telling you Manish. you will disclose what you bought <laughs> <laughs> no i bought my own products f30 f35 and all but yeah. what i'm saying is that i'm not timing the market at this level you're not timing yeah yeah and yeah that's the fact of life that you get a stock at a price you like who are you waiting for nobody is going to come and ring a bell and say please buy this today so the budget is irrelevant when it comes to the investing process right now as far as i'm concerned yes i hope just so just another day just another day we hope so <laughs> but good tv Yeah. <laughs> let's call it by that yeah, yeah. anyway gentlemen thank you so much for joining in today and giving us your thoughts really good having you okay Thanks. and i i hope that gives a little bit of uh, a support to the hearts of investors because all of them are shaken up right now people likening this to 2008 hopefully it's not as bad yeah tuesday morning we'll be back to tracking you as in crude <laughs> right okay wrap it up then on this edition of uh, budget 2016 what markets want